Hi, everybody. So excited to have you here for the SAUSD Arts Forward part of Art Walk. And we're so happy to feature our teacher and students from Century High School. So let's get started. I'm Robin McNair. I'm the coordinator of visual performing arts for Santa Ana Unified School District. And with us tonight, we have Ms. Sabrina Skeels, who is our art specialist for the district. She supports all of us K-12 for the arts. And we have our amazing teacher, Ms. Nina Keller. She's an art teacher at Century High School. And we have Ms. Griselda Gallardo. She's a 10th grader at Century High School in the art classes. And then we have Joseph Mino. He's an amazing art student also at Century High School. And then there's Emmanuel Hernandez, who is both a musician and a visual artist. So we have quite the talent and lineup for you tonight. So we're gonna get rolling. We're gonna start with our amazing teacher as artist, Ms. Nina Keller. So welcome Nina. And could you please uh, share with us about your work and your journey and what you're doing that you're setting up for our kids to learn from you? Yes, so I am currently the drawing and painting teacher at Century High School. And um, I am just so passionate myself about art and I, I really hope to share that with my students and, and just bring that side out of them. And I'm going to share a little video with you that kind of talks about my work and what I'm up to and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Here we go. From the very beginning, I considered myself an artist. When I was little, I would draw on any paper I could get my hands on. And I remember getting in trouble for cutting up my mom's magazines and tearing out the pages for collages. In school, I was involved in theater, uh, the drama club. And I took my drawing and painting classes very seriously. So serious that I decided to major in studio art during my time at UC Riverside. This is really when I developed a deep appreciation for oil painting. And it was all thanks to my professors, Asher Hartman and Mara DeLuca. Around this time is when I fell in love with art history. I was drawn to the Western classical tradition of oil painting, but I craved subject matter that related more to my personal story as a female person of color. I'm really inspired by National Geographic and their depictions of cultures around the world. Also artists like Frida Kahlo, Micheline Thomas, Faith Ringgold, Carrie James Marshall, They've been really influential in my work. Another artist I'm inspired by is James Van Der Zee. He's a photographer best known for his portraits of black New Yorkers during the Harlem Renaissance. And one of my paintings is based on a black and white photograph that he took of my grandmother and great aunt who were both African-American. He used traditional techniques, posing them theatrically in colonial style outfits. And the irony transcended the photo itself. It was almost as if he was rewriting history to elevate the status of the black middle class. I love when artists use classical techniques to explore their own personal memories and cultural heritage kind of this experimentation that upsets history. And I am interested in capturing that in my own work. Mm -hmm. 
I'm Nina Keller. Thanks for visiting me in the studio. Wow, Nina, that's really, really inspiring. And how lucky and fortunate we are to have you as a teacher influencing our students. And we're so grateful that you were drawn to blend your passion about art and, and tying that into teaching and bringing that to our students too. And what I noticed about you that's really important, and many artists do this, they're multi-talented, talented, right? We have multidisciplinary things happening. You brought your theater background into your art as well. So what a great inspiration you are to our students. Uh, we'd love to hear what made you decide to become a teacher. Well, um, I think growing up, I always wanted a teacher that I could talk to, I could um, express myself to, and I had a really tough time doing that just because it's, it's hard to express ourselves. I mean, through art, I found my way of doing that, but I always wanted a teacher that I could be really close to, and um, so I kind of wanted to be that person, and I think there needs to be more representation um, in education of not only women, but people of color. And I think that is so, so important in, um, in education today. It's absolutely so important. And you know, what's really great is that you're bringing that lens and what you're doing to sort of disrupt the world and the way we see things as we always have to help us see things as they are or rethink how we think about things through your art. I know you're doing that to inspire our students too. So I would love to hear from the students and we have three amazing students. We mentioned their names earlier, but let's start talking to them about the, if you could set up what the project was that, that you had them involved in this summer and tell us all about that. And then we'll start hearing from them and how they, we can see your influence on them as well. Yes, so we had a summer enrichment class that started in June and it was called Create at Home. And this class was really inspired by some of the um, social political events that were taking place earlier in the spring. So um, George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement. This really inspired me to do something that was going to make a difference and get students involved in a way that they felt comfortable and it had to be student driven. So that's what inspired this class. And this was completely voluntary. So as we're all in quarantine, I really wanted students to do something that they felt proud of um, while they were at home. So that's what inspired the name of this. And um, of course, students could choose any social um, issue or political issue. They weren't solely limited to Black Lives Matter. And what they came up with really just completely blew me away and inspired me all over again. Right, and you had a whole bunch of students. How many students were, did you have in your summer enrichment class? Yeah, I had about 20 students, and these three were definitely the most consistent, always showing up, um, always being, and if there's a difference between showing up and being present, I think that they were both, so um, that's why I wanted to highlight these three specifically. These three of our youth arts leaders, right? Our Santa Ana Youth Arts Leaders. Uh, also, you had a whole full show that was posted on social media, right? Under your uh, name, Creative Hardest. Creative Hardest. <laughs> so we had your, yeah. So we, so anybody who's viewing this can go and follow you on social media or follow uh, SAUSD Arts on social media and find the whole show. What we're gonna do is talk to each student. We're gonna do three rounds where we're gonna go around and you're gonna set up each of the assignments and then interview each of the students to tell us about their project. So if we could start, let's start with the first project that you did. And, and these are our students that, that we're gonna be talking to. So what was the first project, Nina, that, that you got the students involved in? So our first project was to raise awareness about a social political issue to affect positive change and I know this can sound so broad and that is the whole point is I want this to be student driven. I want students to choose something that's really meaningful to them 
and to take creative risks and see what happens. Um, so it's a way of engaging in activism in a sense. Absolutely. So the first artist we're gonna to talk to is Joseph Mino. So Joseph, we have this project that's gonna, that's right here on the screen, if you will. Uh, tell us about this. Do you have a title for it? I call it out of this world. What's out of this world? Ooh, that sounds so interesting. And so tell us how that relates to what you were thinking about when, when Miss Nina gave you this uh, assignment. Um, well, over the past few years, I seen political issues all over the news, especially the internet. And it's so tragic is that that I started could either be crying or scared so right yeah and and tell us a little bit in detail what are some of the symbols that you have created and embedded in your work that and what do they represent so so the pink fist bump is a woman rights um the second icon from the top right is environmental crisis and and the middle of the artwork is is, is a meaning of hope that hopefully the whole thing's over and the ticket booth with the fire the background icon is voting rights and 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 a um, stick figure i think stick figure just you know sitting down crying is um, is depression crisis i know it's not a part of the is is not a part of the political issues but i've seen a lot of people just Oh, absolutely. People are really struggling with mental health during the pandemic as well as physical health, right? It's right. taken a toll on a lot of people. Um, yeah. So what a lovely and deeply meaningful piece of work that you have, have created. And what I love about it is the center of it all and everything spiraling into the sense of hope. And Joseph, we really, really appreciate you because you do bring us hope. Yes, tell us more. Mm. Well, I'm not finished yet because. Okay, I'm, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, the, the sign with, with a brown hand fist bump, sorry, is Black Lives Matter. And, and the last, well, there's a couple more. The, those people on the boat, orange boat. Yeah, there he is. Is um, I don't know how to pronounce it right, but it is we. Um, how is it? Oh, refugee crisis. Oh, refugee crisis. Yeah. So the refugees that are trying to get here, yeah, or need asylum. And. The on top where it says well it has um the tool icon and the paintbrush icon means is meaning of make art and the bottom with a no sign and a social tank I think yes yeah, social tank. those two two is mean of not war so make art plus not war equals make art not war and yeah wow what a great message um of, of hope that you're carrying and, and helping us to use art to convey that it's it's going to bring healing to the world rather than the war that's happening w would that be what you were trying to communicate yes yes so what was the hardest part about creating this piece for you well, um, I 
think the hardest part is to is how to to draw all those political issues into one um, artwork. Yeah, absolutely. Miss Keller, how did he do? A plus 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 plus. <laughs> Right, we don't even want to have to grade these kinds of things because any artist can express something and tell us a lots of stories. And Joseph, this is an amazing story that you're telling us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. How about uh, Miss Griselda? She's next, right? Let's look at one of her pieces on the same assignment. So Griselda, tell us some more about this work that you created. So I took inspiration from police brutality and the one that got really um, a lot of media attention was um, George Floyd and the Minneapolis Police Department. And so I got my inspiration to do this artwork. And also this artwork is called Oath because um, these, police these police officers take an oath before they go um, do police work and all that stuff. Um, and um, they're, they're, all of the, the drawings on there are connected because, um, you know, it's just, it shows a police officer with blood on his hands. And then you can see how there's signs around the department or the building because this police police officer um, killed someone. And mm -hmm. they say that they're here to protect and they take this oath to protect. It's like basically signing like, uh, signing like a contract so that you can help these people, but yet they don't. They're like kind of hypocrites because they don't keep their word. And it's like really sad because um, no one should get killed by the police. They shouldn't. And the police shouldn't be killing people without reason or it's like, yeah, without reason, like George Floyd, he wasn't doing anything wrong, yet they assumed for something and then he died in the process and they took away his right as a person. And it's just really devastating. So yeah, that's what I did for this. Um, drawing. Wow, so this is a clearly very important topic to you. Yeah. Uh, how does this hit home for you personally? It hits home personally to me because I've always been a independent, curious person and I've always like known about basically like the dirty truth that we here in America have and I've always been interested in that because I feel that people shouldn't be shouldn't have to be like fearful of the police just for one action they shouldn't they should feel safe in their communities yet that doesn't really happen that's not the truth that's not real it's like all fabricated in a way and it's really sad so that's a very interesting and deep subject for you as a 10th grader does you're 15 right yeah that you're grappling with this at 15 years old, uh, it, that's a heavy weight that, that you're bearing. And, and thank you for expressing your thoughts and your feelings about it through your work, because this clearly expresses some emotion about that uh, and how you're feeling about this piece. So very interesting. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. We're going to move now to Mr. Emmanuel and his response to this prompt. Ms. Keller, remind us what the prompt was again. So the students are thinking about a social polit or political issue and um, trying to affect positive change. So raising awareness. Yeah, so clearly um, Griselda did a good job doing transdisciplinary research, trying to figure out in information that's informing her work. So are you there, Emmanuel? Yeah. All right. Tell us about this piece and how it, what, what your thinking was around it. Um, for this piece, I wanted to um, make an, an artwork 
related to the Black Lives Matter movement. And I decided to depict a peaceful protest. And like, that's what all the people in the background are. They're protesters. They're holding up signs saying Black Lives Matter and Science Street is nothing. And in the center is George Floyd because I feel that he, was, his death was something that brought a lot of people like to the Black Lives Matter and it kind of showed them like how police brutality, like it gave them an example of police brutality and how disgusting and bad it was. Um, yeah. So you too were really impacted by this. Um, which part of the artwork is most important to you and why? Um, the most important part of this piece, um, I think to me is the sunset because um, at first, like that space was just empty. Like there was nothing there. And I drew the protesters on black and, and, and George Floyd first. And I was kind of trying to figure out how to fill out that blank, um, fill up the blank space. And I thought about the Santa Ana City logo and how it has a sunrise in the back. And I liked that idea. Um, and so I decided to draw that. And then I kind of wanted to, um, I was curious about what a sunrise means, like what it, what it symbolizes. And I searched it up and um, apparently it means that like, it means like a new beginning and rebirth. And I thought that fit really nice with the Black Lives Matter movement. Cause like a sunrise in the back is kind of saying like, this is the Black Lives Matter movement and this is a new beginning, new opportunities for Black lives. New opportunities. I love the positive spin on a very challenging topic. Uh, both you and Griselda mentioned that you are curious and that led you to do some thinking and investigating. I love how you tied it to the city of Santa Ana and your roots here and how you can bring that home to help affect positive change. All three of you, Joseph, Griselda, and Emmanuel, thank you so much. This was a great assignment. Let's move on to the next one. So Ms. Keller, will you set up the next project too? Whoops. You're on mute. For the second project, <laughs> students are creating a narrative about a social or political issue to affect positive change again, but this time they're creating a zine instead. And if you've never seen a zine, it's almost a little book made out of one single sheet of paper. It's just folded a bunch of times um, with a cut. And so they're to tell a story, which they're so good at. <laughs> Right? These are great stories. I'm excited to see what they're going to show us. So we're going to come back to Joseph. Hey, Joseph, if you want to turn on your camera and unmute yourself, and we're going to look at your zine here. All right. So tell us a little bit about what you were creating in this story, who the main characters are. Well, there's only one main character, and I understand that it's not human. But, um, and sometimes that's, that's the best kind of character to have telling a story. So, so what's the video showing you reading the story? And how this all folds up into a, a booklet. What you have mapped out on the left side of the screen is is the booklet that you're showing us on the right side of the screen, how it folds into a, a little booklet that you can read. Like, so you're saying is that how did I create a book with just one paper? Well, you're showing us by, it's uh, all unfolded on the side and then you folded it up. But we really wanna hear about your character, your main character, tell us about him. Oh, all right. Um, so, about this character named Daisio, which is, is I know it's not human, but I'll explain that later. So it's about him, which it, he's a him actually. He, he's ready to watch some TV, but, but the news popped out and, and paid attention to. So, so 
which drives him crazy because of because it reminds him of all those political issues that he's seen over the years. So, so um, um, he's not a human, yes, but he wants to help people to solve all those problems to become not just a nice person or character, but the most thoughtful character, which is important because, you know, being a citizenship is good, but, but you also have to be, help people who are in trouble. Absolutely. So that's an act of people. Go what ahead, Miss Keller. Sorry. End, sorry. The end is the best. You have to share the end of the story. Wait, do I explain the end? Of course. You can't start a story and not finish it. Oh, right. Okay. So this page right here is in case that um, he's not a human. But, but he wants to be thoughtful, and uh, the cover here is says um, this is about what is social political issues mean. There's ways to fight it, but it might not happen soon. I'm not saying that it won't happen forever, but maybe time will tell when the issues will be over. But um, how do I say this? I'm not done yet. But but I was gonna change that and put um, this is about what is the meaning of social political issues. There are still ways to solve those problems, but um, but it, um, how do I say this? Hey Joseph, but, didn't, didn't you say that your character would be that if he couldn't solve the problem right away, he would never stop trying to solve the problem. Is that what you yeah. were saying? He, he's never going to stop trying, right? You still and, try. Yeah. And, and what I love about that in your story is that idea of perseverance and grit, not to let, uh, what you think is a failure or, or something getting you down because you didn't get the right the answers that you wanted or the solutions yet, but you keep on trying. That's a great story. Well, I'm not finished yet. Okay. So, yeah, at the cover, I was gonna I was gonna change it and put um, this is about what the meaning of social political issues. There's still ways to fight it, but, but, it but it won't happen anytime soon. I'm not saying that all is lost in terms of thinking of a solution, but it's just those issues are so strong that, um, that, that the solutions won't stop all of that. But still, but still, there's ways to solve all of those problems, but only time will tell. Yeah, so this seems to be another message of hope, like your first piece in the first project, where yeah. there, even though it doesn't seem like it right away, there is hope that there will be some, some solutions. But time will tell. Time will tell. You are so right. Which is and they may not be anything we know right now, right? Right. Excellent. Thank you, Joseph. This is a beautiful zine. Very well done. We're going to move on to Griselda's zine and let's hear about what she created. So, um, as a title, the title of this zine slash mini book it's called Ruin. The reason why I chose um, 
the title was because throughout the story, um, it's gonna talk about um, human trafficking, um, just overall human trafficking. I know there's other categories, but you know I'm gonna put them all at all in one. So, um, so on each page, it's basically um, this girl. We don't know her name. We don't know her because I wanted her identity to be unknown because um, some people who go through human trafficking, you don't know who they are either because they want their lives to be private because um, it's because like, you know, they they don't wanna go through the trauma if they, if they did escape from human trafficking or you don't know them because it's underground and you'll never see them because some, some of them don't ever get out of human trafficking because it's so discreet. Um, so yeah, and so it's basically, that's what this zine is about. And my inspiration for this zine was that I've also like did some of my own research because, um, not, uh, because I wanted to um, expose another social topic. And the one that I was really drawn to was human trafficking because I just think it's like the most disgusting, disgusting thing because there's no point in doing that. There's no point, really. There's no point. And the people who are supporting it are disgusting and sick. It shouldn't even be happening, but it still does because our world isn't perfect and we can change, but yeah. And the inspiration I took on is because um, I was watching a podcast that I've been watching for two years now, and they talk about social issues too, but they also talk going to other topics too. And also, I've also been inspired by this artist, um, musical artist called um, um, Melanie Martinez. And she had this unreleased song called A Million Men. And that's, I'm guessing about um, human trafficking, but specifically it is um, sex trafficking that majority of women get um, trafficked in. And it's really sad. And the, that's where I got the inspiration from for this project. And yeah, and then in the end, it, in the very end, like in the third to last page, um, it's the three years later one. And that one, I put three years later because some of these people, some of these people they don't, it takes a long time for them to get out of human trafficking because it is underground and, in, and it's like very secretive and it takes like a long time and it, it may even take more than three years. It will take probably more than three years to find them, but I decided to stick with three years and in the second to last page, it talked about hope because in the end, they need to get hope because They've been like ruined, their identities get lost because some of those people who take them, they mentally and physically abuse you to the point where you don't even know why you're here or like making them lose their their purpose in a way. And then the last page is basically um, to the phone numbers are if to report and also to like, I've seen help get help if you are someone who um, was formerly trafficked. Um, I think they help you there too, but you can report it too because, yeah, just to let them know. Wow, that is such a heavy topic and it seems like you spent a lot of time really digging into the core of what the issues are and the challenges and finding ways to help people. I can see you being a champion, um, an advocate for people and, and being a real help to others. Thank you so much for your thoughtfulness about this amazing project. Um, let's talk about Emmanuel Zine, moving on to the next amazing project. Oh, do I go? So it's yours, Manuel. Tell us about this one. Oh, okay. Um, so this one, this 
seen um, surrounded the Black Lives Matter movement too. And the cover is, it has the Black Lives Matter fist in the center. And the back cover is kind of like an extension of the front cover. So like they kind of like connect. Um, on the first page, it says, it's tragic with death, death being the teeth of the skull. And um, this page kind of talks about George Floyd's death. And like, it started with like, by that, I mean that like George Floyd's death brought more attention to the Black Lives Matter. The next page says, um, information spread quickly which means like more people started to talk about it on social media. The third page says we took to the streets. Um, this means like I was talking about the protesters that started peacefully protesting. Um, the fourth page says, and they don't listen. They being the people who, uh, the people like Donald Trump and some people in the government and the people that choose to be ignorant about police brutality. The fifth page says the law work together until we're heard, meaning um, if we keep protesting, eventually more people will start to see that police brutality is wrong and that it should not be a, um, it should not be a thing. So yeah. You're muted. Sorry about that. I just want to clarify, um, Manuel, these are your own personal political views that you developed yourself, right? This isn't anything that you're learning in school. And we're not, there's no political um, persuasion. This is something that you've done research on about yourself and formed your own opinions about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and clearly you have strong opinions about them. I love what Ms. Keller was saying about uh, not everybody has to go and be at a physical protest. Can you elaborate on that, Ms. Keller? Yeah, I think that um, for some of our students or just anyone in general, there's uh, this misconception that, you know, I'm not doing my part if I'm not out there protesting. And I think that there are so many ways to be a part of this movement, this historical movement. And Physically, some of us are compromised, our health, and we can't be there. So what, what else can we do? And, and these students are using their voice to make art, and they're very loud about it. And as much as I would have loved to have one class on Black Lives Matter art making, <laughs> this was completely like their own uh, ideas and their own views. And it's, how relevant is this? I mean, just four days ago, uh, James Blake was shot seven times in the back by a police officer. And before that, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and uh, Philando Castillo, there's so many names. So this is yeah. really relevant and, um, and so powerful. Yeah, it, it gives me chills thinking about our youth having these voices and, and thank you to teachers like you. And it's, it's my job, Sabrina's job, it's our job to help elevate our young artists to have a voice and to be able to share their voice and their viewpoints through their art. So we are really proud of you, Emmanuel, and Griselda and Joseph for the work that you're doing. And we actually have more. We have one more project we wanna share with everybody. So what's project three? Will you set that up for us, Ms. Keller? Whoop. Again, oh man. <laughs> this is the I'm thing, the meme. You're on mute. <laughs> you better all on mute. <laughs> okay, so this project is really special to my heart because um, I had students watch a virtual talk given by Angie Thomas, and she is the author of The Hate You Give, which was our summer reading at Century last year. And it's an amazing book about uh, a Black Lives Matter story. And so students watched a live virtual talk of hers talking about her writing um, art as a form of activism. So I had them watch that and think about what stood out to them and how can you create art from this? What do you relate to the most? And um, what kind of story will you carry forward? And the most important thing about this 
third drawing is I encourage them not to use words in the drawing to communicate the message. So it, it gives us stronger visual literacy, right? We have to rely on our ability to decode the visual images we see. So let's pull up Joseph's. Joseph, will you put your camera back on? And here we go. Unmute yourself. So let's take a minute to have the, our viewers before you talk about it, Joseph, just to take a minute to look at this piece and see what their, you know, give them a sense of time to make sense of this, make meaning of it. Wait, um, so you tell me is that what's the meaning of this? Yeah, tell us about it. So the audience has been looking at it. They're making some, they're using their visual skills to decode what they think this means. Now you tell us what your intent was behind it. Is that you in the picture? <laughs> so as you can tell, yes. It's a great depiction of you. So tell us what, what are you doing in there? It looks like you're thinking about something really deeply. So, so name this character wherever you want, but I'm not just gonna say main character. So, got it. Main character is. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I thought you were saying something. Fanny, who? Um, this main character is, uh, remembers of how bad the political issues are grow is growing. But he could change all that by just thinking of a solution and solve all those problems. But it's challenging at the same time because just like the 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 book, but it's different. Um, the issues are strong is that that those solutions are not going to help it at all. So. So, um, how does the image of the main character tie to the background? Oh, um, so he's thinking <laughs> about how, of how to solve, how to um, find a solution to solve all those problems. But, um, however, they, some of those solutions won't help at all. So, but he's not giving up. I just um, keep trying thinking of a solution by just um, keeping me a secret. But if, if he's ready to solve all those problems, then he, uh, he's ready to solve them. So that's how the 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 background that you see in in the artwork and the thinking per character connects into one artwork or image or yeah. portfolio but the main the the main thing that you were illustrating is we need change right that's what you're yeah. communicating what a thoughtful uh, piece and your attention to detail. It's it's not only technically great, it definitely communicates a feeling and one of positivity, despite some of the challenging things that are facing us in our world today. So thank you, Joseph. You are a great social artist, shining a light on many of the issues that are happening in our community and across the globe. We appreciate your work and all that you're doing. So keep it up. Let's have, um, let's move on now to Griselda's final piece in this series. Uh, okay, so the title of uh, this um, art piece is called The Talk. And the reason why um, the title is The Talk was because in, in Angie Thomas's um, a book, The Hit You Give, in one of those scenes, um, one of those parts, Star, the main character, had to, had her parents talk to her about um, 
police brutality and how this world is not always um, like fair to um, black people specifically and how they may get called racial slurs like for no reason you know and it's basically that's what this drawing is going to be about and so the coloring of the drawing is is like a ch like child colors or like playful colors like because they're bright because um because of the kid so but that color might turn more brown later on because of the dark topics that are getting um that are being talked and um and it was really difficult for me to um um make a drawing that didn't use any words because um i like expressing um my feelings through talking and through also to typing and, and like writing because i feel like um i don't know i just feel like that's more better for me and um those pictures the little bubble um the little bubbles you know where they're talking um it's just basically how um this that guy gets like get shot because of police brutality and also the little picture where the little kind of funeral is is basically this unknown person because sometimes um police brutality gets unnoticed and now um it's getting recorded you know and it's getting um all of this media coverage and we need that because the truth needs to come out sooner and later so i so it's like very cool that it's coming out because everyone needs to know and everyone needs to stop living in their bubbles that everything is perfect because it's truly not it's not perfect here in america um we have our own flaws too we're not perfect we may seem like the heroes in history but we're in reality we might not be we're not so what a very smart approach to put a juxtaposition of something youthful and and childlike in the setting and then the heavy heavy topics that kids have to address and you can see the gravity in the situation as the parent is talking to the child in this um would, would you say you were successful at communicating though through no words uh i think i was because um throughout um this process through art walk or um the summer enrichment um i had to get used to using um pictures of people and like coloring all of that stuff so i was getting used to it but it was still kind of difficult for me because i was like transition transitioning to something new well here's a beautiful thing you get to continue in your art studies for the rest of your life you can just continue to refine and and work on it and maybe you'll continue to add words and maybe you won't. So that's the beauty of, you never know. You might have, if, in fact, what's gonna be your next piece? Uh, it might be something more about um, child labor. Mm. And because, okay, <laughs> so. Um, Look at your I, teacher, she's maybe, like that girl. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything she can't talk about? She's, she's so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I got this idea from yesterday because at night I was actually watching this documentary um, about how there's like this specific type of mineral called Mika and you use, they use it in makeup and they use it in like technology too, I'm guessing. And, but the dark truth is that um, children have to go in the mines to go and collect it because some of the mines are really small and adults can go into it but it was sad because these kids had like the lady asked them a question like what would you be doing if you didn't have to work in the mines and the little girl said like going hungry because it's their way of um like you know supporting the family in a way and it's like yeah. really sad so yeah i ever want to do something like that so <laughs> yeah Griselda, i'm gonna i'm gonna follow you as a social artist too <laughs> what are you doing that's shining the light on these really incredible issues that are so heartbreaking 
And thank you for all that you're doing to, to help us understand it better and to see it from your perspective. I look forward to the things that you're gonna to do to affect good change in this world through your art and beyond. So thank you for sharing. Let's move on to, to Emmanuel's final piece in this today. Ah, tell us about this. Manuel? Ah, we're having a little bit of technical glitch. Hold on. Uh, is there a way for you to move a little bit? Because we can't hear you. So maybe Miss Keller, you you might have to help Emmanuel out. Oh. Okay, yeah, there you go. Keep talking. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, for the last piece, we were um encouraged. Okay, we um we were encouraged. I'm kind of thinking um about what message I want to send without using words. And then um, I was kind of inspired by the phrase, no justice, no peace, which kind of means like, um, if we don't have justice, all the people who were killed by police and police brutality, then we riot and all this other stuff. Um, so that's what I kind of went with, like so the phrase and then the no justice, I thought it was just like symbols of a courtroom. So like it's, there's um, the scales of justice and the gavel that the judge uses with an X over it to kind of represent, like, or kind of say, like, there's no justice. And then the equal sign is in between them saying, we have no justice, so we have no peace. Fantastic. You clearly have a strong voice in your work, too. You have definitely developed a style. Uh, that's that is representative of you as you continue to create I bet I could follow your work and recognize who you are um, so what direction do you want to go in next in your journey Emmanuel um, I think I want to go into animation it's kind of make like these types of artwork but moving Ah, like, moving. That would kind of, yeah, that would kind of help it, like, tell, it, it would kind of help tell the story better. Yeah, that's another dimension, right? You're going to use your visual art and you can uh, create animated pictures using mm -hmm. your drawing skills as well. Most good animators have that background, right? So, fantastic work. We, well, thank you, everybody. Um, Ms. Keller. Thank you to you and for what you're doing and the influence that you have on our students and, and to each one of you. You can all come back on so we can see you for our, to say goodbye to everybody before we say goodbye. Ms. Keller, would you like to wrap us up with a few words? Yes, I just want to point out to all of our viewers, um, this was a three week, you know, very short three week uh, process that our summer enrichment class was. And these students, they progressed so much in just that short amount of time. And, and they are just an example of our kids in SAUSD and how mm -hmm. our kids find solutions and they never stop trying and they are champions and they work so hard in everything they do. And I'm just really proud. I'm a little biased because I love SAUSD, but I'm really proud to be teaching in this district and I'm proud to have an opportunity to work with students like this because they make the job just amazing and they inspire us all. So, so thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Oh, of course. And our community loves you. And what we love about being part of Art Walk is that this is our junior pipeline into the arts community. We have a very arts rich city in Santa Ana. We have amazing artists there who I know are fascinated by our kids, just looking at, at you guys here. And, and they love to nurture and support us as well. So we are very connected and we're very grateful. And we, we do encourage all of you to follow us on our social media. 
You can see it here. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram at SAUSD Arts. We appreciate your support. We also have a YouTube channel. And we really are thankful to Sabrina, who did all the tech and made everything possible to go smoothly on this recording. So thank you very much for being here. And we thank you. We hope you enjoyed this time. And we look forward to the next time we can share more of our amazing teachers and students. And Nina is an amazing artist as well. So thanks, everybody. Have a really great night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.